Jess Rosales, Ichthyology Collection Manager at the Texas Natural History Collections. We're a part of the Texas Natural Science Center at the University of Texas in Austin. Right now, I am standing inside one of our fish collection rooms. This video is going to show you the process of collecting fishes in the field to how they, to how they ultimately end up becoming voucher specimens in our collections. The video is going to show you a collecting event that took place in the summer of 2004 at Barton Creek Habitat Preserve. Our curator of ichthyology, Dr. Dean Hendricks, and myself went out there and used two different types of collecting equipment, a backpack shocker and a seine. After that, we're going to come back to the lab and one of our research assistants, Adam Cohen, is going to take you through the preservation process. And finally, we're going to come back into the collection rooms and I'm going to explain why we have all of these fish. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. So our, we got our shocker tuned up finally and it was working pretty well. This is a little bit difficult water to shock in because it's highly conductive and the electrical field you get is very intense but not very big. So you have to kind of sneak up on the fish to get them knocked out so you can net them. And we found that the shocker here worked much better along the edges and in shallow waters. So we could kind of trap the fish against the edges and shock them and, and net them. So we're going to show you some of the fish that uh, we caught. Jessica can uh, pull them out here and we'll show you some examples of some of the diversity of fishes we have up here. So this is what's called a Cipronella venusta. It's, um, when it's a minnow, it's one of the shiners. It's either a black spot shiner or a black tail shiner, I'm not sure which. But um, you can tell he's a breeding male. Two things, he's got these very colorful orange fins. You can see them here. And also, um, on his head, he's got tubercles, and they're breeding tubercles. Um, and those are two very good characteristics to distinguish males from females in the breeding season. This is Lepomus cyanellus, uh, identified by the black spots on the dorsal and anal fin, and the orangish uh, margin on the opercular spot here. This is a common sunfish in the hill country streams around here. Very large mouth, they're predaceous, uh, very widely distributed throughout West Texas as well. Here's another kind of interesting fish. This is uh, a non-native fish here. It was introduced from the Rio Grande Basin and it's now widely distributed throughout, uh, uh, from Central Texas southward anyways. It's uh, called the Rio Grande cichlid. It's a family of fishes that's uh, much more common in South America and Central, Mex Central America getting up through Mexico. This is the northernmost species. Uh, you often see these in aquarium shops. They're very uh, pretty fish to keep in an aquarium. They get these blue spots. And in breeding colorations, they get white in front and black in back. Uh, a lot of aquarists like keeping them. But it's a non-native fish here that was introduced by man, uh, apparently for bait or something. But it's now fairly widely distributed in uh, the warmer parts of Texas. Okay, this is a bass. And uh, the bass in Barton Creek are kind of interesting. We're finding that we find a number of what appear to be hybrids between some of the different species here. This one looks... Uh, kind of spotted bass or Guadalupe bass-like, but it's common throughout Texas that you get hybrids between some of the basses. So we'll take this sample back and analyze them in the lab and probably take some tissues for DNA sequencing, which will be a much more definitive way of identifying hybrids than we can often do with morphology. Um, obviously we're wearing waders, and it's rather uncomfortable wearing waders this time of year when it's nice and warm out here and we're sweating like crazy, but the reason we wear them is because we're mixing electricity and water, and everybody learns from day one that you don't uh, plug your radio in while you're in the bathtub, right? So uh, the same principle applies. Water is highly conductive to electricity, so there are lots of safety considerations here. If we were shocking without these waders, we would be shocking ourselves as much as the fishes, and we're putting about 300 volts into the water. It's fairly low amperage, but it definitely uh, I've been shocked many times by electric shockers, and you definitely know you're getting shocked. And especially if you were to fall into the water uh, with the shocker going, you would have your full body in the water, lots of surface area, and you would get shocked very, very hard. It could potentially could kill you, actually. So, so that's why we wear the safety gear, the gloves, and the waders, so we isolate ourselves from the electricity. This is a common piece of collecting gear that fisheries biologists use all the time. It's called a seine. They come in various lengths and various depths 
but basically it's just a piece of mesh stretched between two poles that we call brails and there's a lead line, there's lead along this bottom line that keeps the bottom part of the seine against the bottom of the stream and floats here to keep this part up. We'll pull it through the, the water making a big bag and hopefully we'll trap some fish and drag them up onto this nice little beach that we have here. So we're dragging it so the lead line stays right on the bottom. And we come up and we've got a whole bunch of fish. Looks like everything we caught before. We've got lots of Lepomus oritis. We've got lots of little baby bass. We should have some minnows. I guess they all got away. Huh. We had some shiners in here. Here's a nice bluegill. Little baby bluegill. Bluegills, bluegills, bluegills. Lots of bluegills this time. But it looks like the minnows, all the spot tail shiners got away from us on that one. So once we get back to the lab, um, we're going to preserve these specimens so they can become vouchers in our collection. You'll see what the actual collection of themselves look like. These specimens in jars, nicely cataloged with their labels and everything. You'll see that in a few minutes.